Okay, so super duper excited to come to you guys today and tell you all how amazing Leaders Retreat was. In case you did not follow along with my pictures, you could go back because there's 400 million, but most are in my stories, so they're gone. But I also, at the very top here, want to encourage you, whether you're on here with us live or you're watching the recording later, to really not give up on the hope of going to Punta Cana in February because they did something really cool at this leaders retreat, which I've never seen them do before. Um, first of all, they announced the top 10 point earners of the people who joined during the contest. And I thought that was really cool. And one of the ladies was actually in the top 10 overall points of the entire company. And she joined during the contest. So like, it really is so possible. Um, you know, the extra credits that you get right now, if you're already earned, um, registered for super Saturday or getting registered, you know, that's like, that's, I mean, if you saw my post that they gave us from Leaders Retreat and you were registered, then 100 credits, that's like signing almost 10 people. <laughs> like, that's really awesome. Um, and so who knows what else they're going to throw at us. You know, as you guys know, with the cruise, you may or may not know that they're at the very end because a certain amount of people hadn't earned it and they wanted more people on the ship. They made it so that if you had only earned 800 credits instead of 1250, you could go. You just didn't get to bring a person. Like, you know, Plexus always makes it right. Like they want as many people there as possible. So my thing is, is just dig, like dig. And so I'm going to start with some of the training that Genevieve had for us. You guys know, I love her, but um, she mostly spoke on failure, but she started with saying um, that the race of endurance is not won in the first half. Like, you know, really digging in. And I think this is, um, I don't know if I've talked about this on a recent training, but she has shared this with us. Of a really good cycle to be in is like sprint for 30 days, jog for 30 days, walk for 30 days. That's your 90 day cycle. So you're going to get tired. I mean, I have run four full marathons, 26 miles. And it's not one in the first half. Like I could go out strong. I tell this story all the time. My husband, he has run two of them with me. And his very first one, he was determined to beat me because I had run them before. And so he went out really fast. And sure enough, I came up on him. He was like hunched over, holding his knees, saw me come. He's like, okay, I'm going to come with you. But then he always thought my pace was too slow. Like I'm a solid 10 minute marathon runner, 10 minute miles. And he can run like five miles at like eight minute pace, seven and a half minute pace. So he would take off again. And then guess who would catch him? I would. Because he was going out too fast, not realizing how long it was, but he still could have beat me except for he collapsed at like mile 18. And I basically had to pull him across. So work that in. Like, know that this is an endurance race, and you're not going to win it in the first half. So sprint to the goal is just the beginning. So you're going to sprint for 30 days, jog for 30 days, walk for 30 days. But depending on where your point's at right now, and if anybody wants me to help map out their points to see what they actually need to get them to leaders retreat, just message me privately, and I am happy to do that. But if, depending on where your points are right now, you might need to sprint for the next six weeks. I promise you it is worth it to be, like, I did not know what to expect in Haiti, but it's gorgeous. I also did not know that Haiti and Dominican Republic were the same island. Didn't know. I didn't know that there was all these battles and then Spain took one side and called it Dominican Republic and the French took the other side and called it Haiti. You guys, that island is stunning. I'm more excited to go 
on the next leader's retreat than I was before it. So then she talked a lot about failure. And she said this multiple times, but she said failure is just feedback. Nothing more, nothing less. And that the more feedback you get, the more you can pivot and realign. And isn't that the truth? You don't know to fix something unless it goes wrong, right? Like if everything is going smooth and if you are growing at the rate that you want to grow at and you're super comfortable, then by all means, like don't change anything. But if you're not growing at the rate that you want to grow at, then it's probably time to look at what you're doing and pivot to whatever degree it is to reach the goals that you want to reach. Um, she said, um, get competitive with your doubt and push against it. So when you're having fears, push against it. Like, don't worry about being competitive with me or the person next to you, but with your doubt. And she said, get competitive with your past. And this is really powerful because if you feel like or if you have not feel like, but if you've looked at your points and they are going backwards or you're not where you want to be, then realize that that's not an indication of your future. It was just designed to give you feedback, which I thought was really, really good. Like whatever has happened in the past, it's just giving you feedback based. So for instance, if your goal is to sign three people a month, but you're only signing one, that doesn't mean you're always going to only sign one. That means that based on what you did, you maybe need to three times it to go from adding one to three, right? It's just giving you feedback. And um, she talked about, and you know, I love this because I love mindset stuff, but she said the main reason that people quit is it's a brain thing. The brain doesn't like uncertainty. So if you've never been a diamond before and you're like, I want to be emerald. I want to be a sapphire. I want to be diamond. Your brain's going to push back on that because you aren't, you've never done that before. But if you have spent time visualizing it and really talking to your brain, like, I'm an emerald, I'm a sapphire, I'm a diamond. Your brain's gonna push back less. Spend some time visualizing walking across the stage. Spend some time visualizing how your life will be different. Write it out. Like if I am earning $7,000 a month with Plexus, how will my life look different? What things will change? And then spend a lot of time there because then when you're like, I'm going to be an emerald. Your brain doesn't push back on it. It's like, yeah, I know exactly what that's going to look like. So let's go through it. She also said, and this can hit hard for some people, myself included, but she said, you can go so much further and so much faster than you think you can. Like, yeah, yeah. She's not wrong, right? When I'm like, I should really message 10 people today, but I have so much laundry. Do you know what's so comfortable for me? Laundry. You know why? I know what happens when I do laundry. I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to put it in the wash, then I'm going to put it in the dryer, and then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to fold it. My brain is so comfortable with laundry. My brain is not uncomfortable, is not comfortable messaging 10 people and not knowing what's going to happen, right? So I've got to push against that and make a plan to go faster and further. Um, she shared reminders and I want you to have them that you're extraordinary. You have exactly what it takes. You're showing up, you're amazing. Your job as a Plexus ambassador is to be a professional encourager. You are encouraging people to live better. You're encouraging people to have a healthier life, a happier life. You are literally here to encourage people, which 
is such a blessing. I feel like such a blessing. We have the opportunity to do that. She said this too, the opposite of success is not failure. It's settling. Is anybody guilty of settling with where their points are? Because it's so comfortable, right? You already know what this feels like. Even if it's uncomfortable because you're not earning as much as you want, it's still, you're like, not evicted yet. Still eating. I'm okay. You've settled sometimes. And so, again, continuing to push through the fear and doubt. And she said, don't beat yourself up for staying the same rank. I think we're all guilty of that. I'm so guilty of that. Most of us are guilty of beating ourselves up for being like, we've been with Plexus for X number of years and we've been this rank for so long. Like we must be doing something wrong. No, there's so many people that would love to be where you are. There's so many people that would love to have some customers, you know, wherever you are, there's definitely somebody who would rather be where you are than where they are. And just know that you're on your own path. It's a path of your own choosing and just don't stop until you get where you want to get. Where you want to get to, don't quit until you get there. And then her final thing was to make sure you learn from people who are doing the things you want to do. If you see people earning trips, if you see people, you know, whatever it is, what are they doing? Write it down. And a lot of those people, you know where they are? They're on Motivation Monday. And do you know you can go watch all the recordings? The people that they put on Motivation Monday, if you look at the leaderboard each week, it lines up. So the people who are on leaderboard are often the people on Motivation Monday and they're sharing what they're doing. She said, listen and write it down. Write it down and then take action because of what they're doing is working. They're sharing. They're not sharing people who are like on leaderboard four years ago. It's people who are excelling right now and they're talking about a Motivation Monday, what they're doing right now. And so take notes and then take action on that. Do you guys have any questions, thoughts? What are your thoughts on what Genevieve shared? Anything that stood out to you or is uncomfortable or maybe make, pushes you harder? Angie is frozen. Usually Angie talks to me and she's frozen. Can you hear us, Angie? Yes. Well, you're frozen. Yes, I can hear you. Is she I don't frozen know. to you? To everybody else or just me? I'm, I'm frozen to me too. Oh, okay. Cool. You got anything to say? Um, it's okay I'm if you don't. Just, I'm just trying to catch up because I segued mm. directly from something else I was watching to turning this on. So my, my brain is still getting here. Perfect. 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 Um, because the dog's barking. Okay. So here are some people that you could follow. I'm not going to dig into their training, but, uh, Randa Jordan was one of our presenters because she was, the, I think the second highest point, point earner. Scroll back if you want, not right now, but to my Facebook post from maybe day two. I actually think I maybe did it in Gold Diggers. I'll double check. But I think I did screenshots of the top 10 earners totally. And then the top 10 earners who had just joined Plexus. Whenever I see people on leaderboards, I don't know if you do this, but I automatically go to their social media, their Facebook and Instagram. And I look and say, how are they posting? What does it look like? What are they saying? Because whatever they're doing, and certainly there are things that we don't see, right? We don't see how many messages they're sending, but we can see what their messaging looks like. And some of it may not align with you at all. And some of it might, meaning everybody has a different style, right? And everybody's going to look different in how they post and how they speak. And you want to always make it your own voice. But there's a good chance if you, you look at those 20 people, 
some of those you're going to really connect with. And you're going to be like, I'm going to save a lot of her posts to reuse because they really are very similar to me. So go look at those things. Um, so Randa spoke. Um, Kimberly Petrowski spoke. Um, and she talked about bringing positive energy. She talked about focusing on self-love in your messaging because that's what a lot of people are missing, right? They are missing that like self-love for themselves. And by that, I mean, taking care of themselves, putting themselves forward. I mean, I have somebody who for the last seven, six weeks have said that they're going to order. And she is, she knows, she literally said to me, why is it so hard for me to spend a hundred dollars on myself when I do it for my kids all the time? Right. And so mirroring, not mirroring, but being the person who other people want to be like, right? Because they're going to join somebody who is doing similar things that they want to do. Because don't forget, you're building a community. So thinking to yourself, what kind of person, what kind of leaders do I want on my team? Personally, I want leaders who are self-motivated. Like I like to hold people's hands, but not for forever, right? Don't we all want like somebody to join who's just going to be like, hmm. So in my vision casting, I am looking for somebody who is self-motivated. I am looking for somebody who is positive. I don't really like negative Nellies. Not that I dislike them, but I, I, I don't. It's like I repel them. I'm like, ah, not my people. So thinking through who do you want on your team and and having your voice towards them to attract them. So self-motivated, positive, energetic, you know, um, really like when you look at people on their social media and you see them like kind of killing it, aren't those the people you want on your team? And so why aren't you messaging them? Because you think they wouldn't want it or you think they're already too busy. You know, they say, if you really want to get something done, ask the busiest person you know. And so aren't those the people you want on your team? The ones who know how to get stuff done? So really thinking about who you want on your team. Um, I am going to... Here's what I'm going to do because it's a long message. So Kimberly Petrowski shared some of her messages. Oh, hold on. We have... I mean, that's my name. She shared some of her messages that she sends out to people. What I will do is drop those in Gold Diggers with the recording. Is that good? So when I do the post of the recording of this, I will drop in the comment section of that the images of her messaging examples that you can use if you want to because they were really good. Um, And she talked about, this is always a good reminder, but continuing to plant seeds because the day that you plant the seeds is not the same day that you get to eat the fruit. We know that, but sometimes don't we need the reminder? Like I've probably heard that 400 times in my life and I still wrote it down. <laughs> you know, the day you plant the seeds is not the same day that you eat the fruit. Um... She talked about, of course, we know this, but retention is key, especially when it comes to um, business builders, letting level no ones know that you we're invested in their uh, success. She talked about something that I haven't done in forever. I don't know if any of you guys did this. I feel like we did it during COVID. Do you guys remember Sample Saturdays? Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I kind of want to bring it back. The way Sample Saturdays worked for our team, what we did, and it was during COVID, maybe even before that, might have even been 2018, but we would make a post about offering samples, right? And um, so we would send out samples throughout the week. And then on Saturday, we would have a, a chat for everybody that anybody on our team sent samples to, and we would tell them the night before, hey, at 
um, you know, eight or 9 a.m., be sure to drink your pink drink and your active or whatever you we've sent them, whatever we're deciding to send them. But we did like a pink drink and an active. Be sure to drink your pink drink and active by 9 a.m. And then watch for messages and giveaways in this chat. And so what we would do then is ask people, how are they feeling, you know, right around 10? Because you guys all know after you have active about it, 45 minutes into it, don't you just have more energy? We may be used to it because we drink it every single day. Do you know who is not used to it? All those people we just sent samples to. That is a brand new feeling to them. And so in that messenger chat, and we'd follow up like, you know, every 30 minutes, kind of send a chat. We would drop knowledge, like basically like a 15 minute messenger chat of like slim and active, like with good information. And then we would do, a discount for anybody who ordered within 24 hours, you get bleh, whatever it is, right? So creating an urgency for people in that sampling. And then how duplicatable is that? When they join, we're going to say, hey, get the address of three to five of your friends. I will send them the samples and they can do this next weekend. Right? So they're going to just offer their friends free stuff. We're going to do the messenger chat. So, anyway, I haven't done that probably in four years. And um, so, Kimberly Petrowski talked about how they've been doing that for a long time. And some people are so new, they never, don't even know that existed. And some people do, but I am going to bring that back to life. So stay tuned because you guys know whether you're on my team or not, you guys are always welcome to take part in those things, okay? Next, we heard from Gene Tips. You guys, he's so amazing. He is so amazing. And, and I don't remember, it was Alec. Alec touched on this, but I have been hearing this for the last six months from like my coach and some other diamonds that... Um, Alec kind of explains it like they'd have a big meeting and people would say, hey, we should do this. We should do this, blah, 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 blah. And Alec and Tara would be like, OK, we'll talk about it. We'll consider it, blah, blah, blah. And then they would go back and then they would talk about it. And then they'd have other meetings. And I've heard this is how it was. So things were really slow to change when it was Alec and Tara. And they never wanted to hurt anybody's feelings. So if they didn't want to do something, they would never say in the meeting, no. They would say We'll consider it. And apparently, Alec, I mean, Gene is totally opposite. In the meeting, he'll either say no or go with it. Let's try it. And I've heard that he is like not afraid for things to mess up. If he thinks something's a good idea, he is like, let's try it. If it doesn't work, doesn't work, we'll try something else. But we're not going to be slow ever again. And I have heard that from multiple people at corporate, that their favorite thing about Gene is we're moving fast. And what's coming in 2024 is going to be amazing. But Gene really touched on the economic landscape, landscape. And he said, you know, they spend a lot of time looking at that. Um, but the average income loss of... Maybe last year, I didn't write down the number, but everything was a 2021 number, I think. But the average income loss for the household is $7,300 for the year. You guys, that's a lot. That's a lot that people could fill in. Hold on. Let me get my handy dandy calculator out. That's $608 a month that people have lost. That could be devastating to a lot of families. Honestly, it really could. What if you could help them make up that money? We know that if they continue to add three people a month, they're going to make at least $300 a month on average. How much is $600 a month? Does anybody make $600 a month? You know how many points you have? I don't know. I could do the math on it, but I'm not right now. But... We know that we can help people make $600 a month. 
I feel very confident that anybody who's willing to dig in, I can help them make $600 a month. And that's for some people will keep them in their home. It really will. People who are paycheck to paycheck losing $600 a month. That's a lot. Um, and that would mean, oh, it's a part-time job. I have my USA Today article. I was just reading it yesterday, a different one, not the one I told you guys about last time. But there's like, I don't remember the exact number, but like 20 million people right now that are working a full-time job and a part-time job. That's a lot of people. You know that they don't want to work outside of the home that much. We are offering a solution. He said the monthly mortgage payments more than doubled since 2021 and rent is at an all-time high of 25% more expensive. Oh, it's 25% more expensive to heat your home this winter. So I'm sharing this because if you're not sharing the business opportunity, you guys are missing the boat. Also, if you're sharing the business opportunity and people say yes to that, they are getting in your boat to help you row the boat. If you just sell them the products and then they're like, hey, do you want to share? They're like, I didn't get in your boat to row it. You offered me a free ride around the lake, right? I'm here for a free ride around the lake. I'm going to order my products and that's it. But if you reach out to people and you're like, hey, if you row this oar with me, I'm going to help you fill the gap in your income. Those people already know. They're getting in and they're like, what side of the boat am I sitting on? Right, right side stronger. Let me row on that side, right? It's a different way of communicating. Um, so let's see. He shared a great graphic about, so in 2020, of course, there was the all-time high spike of people starting their own business. Like, no, everybody knows that. It went way high. And it had been the same. Let me look at my graph. It had been the same since 04. Basically the same. I don't know. Can you guys see this? You can't see it, can you? Okay. So from 04 to 2020, it did not change at all. Basically between 200,000 to 300,000 applications for new businesses. In 2020, July of 2020, it spiked to almost 600,000. So from 200,000 to 600,000. And here's the thing. In 2022, I don't have an exact ruler, but it is still staying steady at like 500,000. You guys, people have not given up on hope of owning their own business. They haven't. They really, they just don't know what to do or they don't have the money, right? So you can offer them something really great. People are looking for business opportunities. And with the Plexus opportunity, you guys know this, but just a reminder, you are offering people community, a great comp plan, and products that are second to none. I mean, that's a great business, right? Like, here's the deal. You know, if you opened a Chick-fil-A restaurant, you're going to make money. Problem is, I don't really have the money to buy a Chick-fil-A franchise. We are offering, if people want to put in the work, also if I buy a Chick-fil-A, you know what I have to do? Work a lot. They don't let you just buy one and hire a bunch of nice teenagers. They make you actually <laughs> like work at one for a long time before you can buy one. So um, we talked about the amount of money that Plexus spends for their clinical studies. So reset. You can say it's backed by science that you'll lose six pounds in three days. It's not a willy nilly, like clinical studies prove that you'll lose on average six pounds in three days. He talked about the patent and what a huge deal that is, getting a patent and it covers the ingredients of the slim microbiome. So the XOS, the uh, um, whatever all the ingredients, y'all know. Not your science girl. Lynette, did you write down the ingredients that are covered in it? Perfect. Nobody cares. Just so y'all know. Listen, I'm a jewel. I don't know what in the world's in it, except for that it's colored by beetroot. 
That is my knowledge. <laughs> it is not food coloring. It is colored by the beetroot. So patent is huge. Um, and that's going to cause, just so you know, that's going to cause a lot of people to have to change what they're selling. Because there's a lot of people marketing and trying to sell a pink drink. They can't do that anymore. It's against the law. And our lawyers are on it. How crappy would it look if all of a sudden we had to change the name of some of our products because eh, we were faking. We weren't the original, right? So staying with it is amazing. He talked about um, our company is cash flow positive with zero debt and how huge that is because so many companies right now, especially network marketing companies, they are looking for investors. They are looking for bank loans. They are not cash flow positive. And what happens, you guys know this, when you get investors or you get a board of directors, what happens? Everybody gets a vote. Everybody gets a say in what you're doing because what do they care about? Profits, right? And because we don't have any of that and we have so much money saved up, he says we can make decisions fast and decisions that we want. Decisions that are good for you, the ambassador, good for the company. Like we don't even have to, when, when Gene says yes, guess what? They get to go with it because we don't have, he doesn't have to ask anybody. I mean, I'm sure Tarl weighs in, but I feel like Tarl's cashing a pretty nice check at this point. Um, let's see. He talked about, um, he shared a couple quotes. One was from Jack Welch, which was control your own destiny or someone else will. And I love that control your own destiny or someone else will. And um, he shared the Tony Robbins quote of it's in the moments of decision that your destiny is shaped. So both of those touch on destiny. Um, it's in the moments of decision that your destiny is shaped was Tony Robbins. And he, he shared a story about when Alec was telling somebody about his vision for the company, what he wanted to do, what he wanted to start, what his plan was. And, um, you know, the big business person who was talking to him that were like, I don't ever work. It's not going to work. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Don't do it. And he talks about how one decision at a time to ignore the naysayers will change your destiny. What if Alec had, I mean, Tarl had been like, okay, you're more successful than me. That You're probably right. None of us would be here. That would be so awful. I, well, I'd probably be dead, but maybe God would have figured something else out to help, help me before then. But like you control your destiny. So here are the tips he gave on creating your own destiny. If you want to write these down, have a plan, set well-defined goals and measure them. Take action. Ignore the naysayers. Don't settle for mediocrity. Persevere through the tough times. And surround yourself with supportive people. Do I need to repeat any of those? Angie, you're my cue. So just tell me when you're done writing. I think I've got it. Okay, I'll repeat them just in case. Have a plan, set well-defined goals and measure them. Take action, 
even if you're scared. Ignore the naysayers. Don't settle for mediocrity. Persevere through the tough times and surround yourself with supportive people. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, Alec spoke next about our philanthropy. So I'll just go through that real quick just because I'm actually amazed at how I have a few people who were so inspired by, they order lean just because of our Nourish One initiative because they have just this heart of like giving and it's huge for them. So here are um, just some, some information. You guys know philanthropy is such a huge part of Plexus. It just has been forever. But so far, 38 million meals have been given through Nourish One. And as a reminder, Lean gets one meal given and Reset is three meals. And they have a goal of 40 million meals by the end of the year. So that's what we're on pace for. That's a lot of food, y'all. That's a lot of meals. That's a lot. Um, okay. Let's see. Morgan, somebody I did not write down her last name spoke next. Lynette, did you write down Morgan's last name? She's a sapphire. Lynette's looking it up. I took pictures like when they would walk out with their name behind them. That way we would yeah. be able to look it up later. So let me look. I did it for um, everybody. And then I just missed hers. I don't know what I was doing. And you said Morgan. Yeah. She went after Alec. Um, she would have been the last. Well, she's the last person I took notes on. On day one. While well, you're looking. I'm going to tell you guys some of the cool things she said again, but spark curiosity that causes people to lean in. Um, she said this, and I feel like I don't do a very good job of this. So I want to try to do better, but she's in my team page, but she said, know about all the products, even if you don't take them all, because the people you're going to be sharing with might need something different, even if you don't need it. Right. Like at this point, I know all the products and what all of them do and whatever. But, but I sometimes am short sighted and forget that everybody hasn't been around for nine years. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I've been around, I feel like at every product launch, except for Triplex and body cream. Right. So I've kind of learned and seen the testimonies as I've gone. But I feel like I could do a better job on my team page of just sharing product info. Um, because you never know who is suffering from, ah, uh, I don't know, um, drawing a blank, but so suffering from something that nerve could help, you know, suffer. So maybe somebody just had surgery. Anybody that's just had surgery needs nerve to help regenerate their nerves and have less nerve pain. Right. And whoever I've just pitched gut health to, they don't have the first clue that nerve might be perfect for their mom. You know why? Because I never told them about nerve. So that's me. I want to start sharing knowledge in my team page and on my personal page about different products. Because the more you know, the more you can help people. Um they talked about just leveraging limited time offers to introduce more people to Plexus. And um, she gave the waitress analogy, which I think I shared with you guys. Um, I shared the waitress analogy myself when I was teaching you guys about the, um, the compensation enhancements, where really it is about adding something else to somebody's order. You know, you somebody might come in knowing hey, I'm going to get the, you know, chicken Alfredo for dinner. Well, then you might say, I was a server for a long time, so it's easy for me to think like this. You want to start with a super salad? Typically, when you give somebody an option of one or two, what do you do? 
you pick one. You're not thinking, oh, they just added $5 to my bill. You're just like, they gave you an option of two things and your brain is like, oh, I got to pick one. <laughs> right. And then they're going to offer you coffee at the end. They're going to offer you dessert. So, and you don't get mad at people. Like if I'm sharing, so I sold the combo, um, a few combos recently, of course, of the black cherry lime and the balance. Well, did you know if you just buy those two separate, my, my first inkling when I first was doing that, I looked, and I'm like, oh, it's over hundred PV for the two of them. And I looked and I was like, I'll do that. And then when I was actually putting their order in with them, I was like, wait, it's actually cheaper to do the welcome pack basics and get you one product for free. It was $8 cheaper for them to get a third product. Yeah. Instead of ordering the two alone. So doing that, people are excited and it's so easy to say, Hey, how is your sleep? Like, do you want to, these sleep gummies are amazing. Like just, you've already talked to them about gut health. Listen, if people have trash gut health, you know what? They don't sleep very good. But they just think that that's normal. So you already got them in gut health. We already know they're ordering the triplex. What if you just said, hey, before we finish this order, how is your sleep? Because if you're selling me a combo, I'm actually not thinking twice about you adding $24 to it. That's all sleep is. $24. It's my favorite and it's my child's favorite. So just think of it as the waitress analogy, especially on people's first order and their second and third, because you're getting commission on those. Remember, but her whole point was limited time offers of, of, you know, adding those things in. Also, if you have not ordered the body oil yet, you should. It's my favorite hand cream. I will probably have these three hand creams for 400 years because I think I have four hand creams already in my thing next to my bed. And I think they smell good and they're not greasy and they're great, except for I just don't use them. That body oil, I'm using it all the time. And Andrew got itchy on the ship. You know what I put all over it instead of body cream? I said, let's try this body oil. Literally in 30 seconds, he stopped itching. So I'm a fan. Um, okay, so she shared, just so you know to look for it she shared exact messaging around pitching limited time offers to people so i will also drop those in the comments of the recording so look for those um because you can also you know black friday will have a whole new set of products limited time offer products so save your messaging lynette did you get her last name i didn't get her last name but i go oh wait hold on Morgan Johnson. What a simple last name. How did I not get that? Maybe yeah, and if, you and if you took pictures of the of yes. the sample messages on oh, the side, it, it has her name. Oh, you know what? I scanned in only, but I, see, I can see her last name. I didn't get the whole thing, only the blue part. Um, But her final three takeaways were have passion for the products, don't reinvent the will, and repetition is key. Um, you guys, I've already spoke for 45 minutes and I haven't even hit day two. So let's do day two next week. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Um, because there's lots of good stuff on day two, but also we got things to do. We can't be sitting here all day long. Nobody will watch our video if it's four hours long. Um, okay. Questions, thoughts? The three takeaways that you just said, have passion for the products, don't reinvent the wheel. And what was the third one? Repetition is key. Thank you. Oh, and with that, I, I scrolled right past that, but she said, set an example of sharing that your team can follow. Repetition is key and continue to plant seeds. So always, always, always remember that 
people that join you are going to very often mimic what you did. So if you signed them up through a messenger event, they're probably going to be comfortable adding their people to a messenger event because that got them hooked, right? If you sign them up from a sample Saturday, what are they probably going to be? They'll be like, it worked for me. I'm going to get my people to do that, right? If you sign them up over the phone, what are they going to think is supposed to happen when somebody wants to join them? They get them on the phone. They get them on the phone. People do what you're showing them. Even if you're not telling them that, they're going to, and you're going to have your outliers, right? Like I've got one. She's going to do it her own way over and over and over, no matter what I do or suggest. She's just, it's going to be her way and that's okay. But the majority of your people don't know any different. It's not like they have 40 examples of how to sell Plexus. They have you, right? And so be cognizant of that when you are talking to people. Thoughts, questions? Please, 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 please don't give up on earning Dominican Republic. You can do it. And if, don't forget, if you need help mapping it out to know exactly what you need to do to get there based on wherever your credits are today, send me a message with where your credits are today and I will map it out for you. And of course, remember that's only an estimate. It'll not an estimate. I mean, I'll map it out exactly so that you earn it. But let's say all of a sudden you get a silver. You're like, oh, I don't have to add six this month because I just got this person silver. You guys know that. And we can play with it week by week as your points grow. Like I can map it out. It's, that is not a struggle for me. I don't mind to do it. And I want all of you guys there. Because Lynette, how amazing was that ship? That was, and that, that awesome. island island. Like, were you on that island thinking, I can't wait to go to the other side of the island? Yeah, I, I I would sit on my balcony in the mornings and just in awe of, like, that I was actually there. Because never in my lifetime would I have done that by for myself. Yeah. So. It's true. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, never would I have just taken Andrew on a cruise. Ever. It's either, like, all the family where he would be totally overwhelmed. But it was such a special time. But also I kept thinking if my husband was here, he would legit have been drunk for 18 hours a day. <laughs> and he would have been one of those sardines in the pool acting a fool. Like it was, so it's just, don't give up. We have, what do we have? Seven weeks to earn it. You guys can do anything for seven weeks. It might mean working harder. It is four gazillion percent worth it. I promise. So if you want help with your points, let me know. And I'm going to get this recording up and posted in Gold Diggers. Lynette, are you in my Gold Diggers page? I don't think so. I'm just, yeah, I'm just getting added to a lot of things. So I don't think I am. Okay. I will add you to that. That's the page I have for anybody that wants to work the business. So whenever I'm doing calls or trainings or have done, you can look in there. There's a, there's a lot. These sweet ladies have been showing up for, we've been doing this a lot, y'all. Um, but I'll put that in there. I'll drop the screenshots of messaging in case you guys want to steal any of those. And um, book club on Friday is a go. Okay. And uh, Lynette, if you ever want to do that on Fridays, we're doing Atomic Habits right now is the book study we're doing. And okay. because I've been bananas, we started it like six weeks ago. And we're on, what are we on? The third chapter? The <laughs> Normally. Third the third law. The third law. Yes. And you don't even have to read it. You can learn things. But for various reasons, I have not led my book study very well this time. So, you know, it's, it's, a, I always say things happen for a reason, but um, my, so I manage a medical office and my staff gave me that book for boss's day in a basket. I haven't even started it yet. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. But so to start it. in the law and it's laws are short. So if you want to jump in and we have the recordings of our first section, our second section. So feel free to jump on or if you're working, watch the recording. But those recordings are also in Gold Diggers. Awesome. Okay. okay. 
All right, you guys, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. You're amazing. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.